Hello, today's video is a full face of Essence makeup. This isn't sponsored. I've just been wanting to do some one brand full face videos. I find them helpful because they give me a good idea of how various products from one brand work, function, and if they're good or not. So I figured I would start with one of the most affordable brands out there. I have some great Essence products. Some of these are pretty new. I had one of their new eyeshadow palettes on in a recent video and had several comments asking how I got that look, so I will be showing Showing you that today. I'm excited. Let me know other brands you want to see full faces of. I already have a few together that I'm ready for. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. We enjoy everyday beauty made easy here. That's what this channel is all about. If you like that, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button before the end of this video. And let's go ahead and get into this full face of Essence makeup. I always like to prep and hydrate my lips first. And I'm going to start with something kind of fun here. These Fruit Kiss lip Lip balms. They come in different flavors. I just think they're kind of fun. I'm applying strawberry, which does give a hint of a tint to the lips. They have almond oil, so they do a little something to prep the lips, but they just are kind of old school fun for me because they have that fruity flavor to them. But if you didn't know about these, these are so cute and so fun. I mean, these would even make great stocking stuffers for somebody. I think they're around $3. So my skin is clean. I've already applied my sunscreen. I'll list the one I used today down below as well as others that I like in the description along with all the products that I'm using today. I've talked about, used, and loved the Essence Pretty Natural Hydrating Foundation plenty of times on my channel. I love this. I'm going to use this today in the shade 70. On one side though, I'm going to use this primer that I've never used before. This is the Prime Plus Studio Poreless Plus Skin Blurring Putty Primer. It is a silicone free primer. I want to see kind of how this interacts with my sunscreen and how it works underneath this as well. This is about a half of a pea size amount for half of my face. That makes sense because you know, you should only use a pea size amount for your whole face of any primer. It just smells kind of clean. I don't really notice a major scent. Now I do notice, wow, that really took down the shine on my face and almost made things appear kind of matte. Do you guys see that? You can see just a sheen, a radiance on this side from the lights reflecting in. I'm gonna let that set down for a minute or two before I go in with the foundation. So I'll apply foundation on this side of my face first. There's definitely too much here on the back of my hand. I just wanted you to see the texture. It's a little bit runny. I like to use a dry sponge. I don't like to use fingers very much to apply foundation, especially when I feel like I might have any kind of dry flakies going on. And I have been testing out some new skincare, so I just wanna be careful of that. But rubbing things in with my fingers can definitely dredge up those flakes and I don't like to do that. This just bounces everything in and keeps it really nice and even. So I've said that this is a great dupe for Urban Decay Hydromaniac Foundation. It gives light to medium buildable coverage and it gives my oily combination skin that does have some surface dehydration sometimes a nice radiance, but it doesn't make me oily throughout the day. Okay, so I would say I built this to light, medium, almost medium coverage. You can still see my skin under Underneath, but it even things out way more than it was before. And there's a nice soft radiance to my skin, but it doesn't look greasy. Now I don't take anything under my eyes, so ignore my under eye area. So let's see how this works over this primer. I'm interested to see how this wears throughout the day. I will be checking in and either leaving something at the end of the video or leaving it in the description box to let you guys know how this wears throughout the day, if it wears significantly better on the primer side than the other side. Although it already wears well without the primer. That's one of the things that impressed me about this foundation. Now, if you are someone who likes to apply your foundation with a brush or fingers, you will not have a problem doing that with this foundation. I just prefer to use a dry sponge. So I'm looking in my magnified mirror and I actually feel like I'm seeing a little bit of a powderiness, a texture over on this side where I had the primer that I'm not seeing over here. I don't know if you're gonna be able to pick that up on camera though, because it is so magnified where I'm seeing it. And it may end up not even being apparent once everything is set and once all the rest of my makeup is on. I'm a little worried that my base makeup is going to go drastically downhill from this point forward because I have here the Essence Camouflage Matte Concealer. This is waterproof and tattoo covering and you heard the word matte. I have dry textured under eyes. I mean, I think it'll work great for these little spots, but for my under eyes, not so sure. And the powder that I love, I've shared here on my channel before, is the Essence My Skin Perfector Loose Fixing Powder. It gives an instant blur effect. I have the shade Nude. I don't usually set my face with a tinted 
powder, but this is the shade that I have. So we're gonna go with it. I mean, I know some people set their makeup with tinted powders, so mm, this is what we're dealing with today. Okay, I'm starting out lightly. I think I'm gonna use my fingers to give it a little bit of warmth. I am have on no corrector. I will use it also to set my eyelids. Okay, so the shade that I have is not brightening for me. Okay, it, oh yeah, this is basically attaching itself and kind of separating where it's meeting the foundation. Okay, this is not good. We're gonna have to try and fix that. I did just lightly dampen my sponge. Um, if this is too bad, we are going to have to just totally change concealers. I just feel like this sets too quickly. Okay, I did apply a little bit more and go back in. This is not good. Okay, so we are going to, I'm actually gonna show you in this video how if this happens with your concealer, do you see where that looks very, very powdery and almost like it's dry skin right there, which it's not. It's where the concealer and the foundation are just not meshing together. And here it's like the concealer just did not attach to my eye. I'm gonna show you how I remedy that. So I'm gonna take a makeup wipe here in a second, but I do wanna tell you the shade because I forgot to tell you. It is 30 Light Honey and I am gonna use it as a spot concealer. I think it will work really well for that, but this is... <laughs> not the concealer for underneath my eyes. So I'm gonna take a makeup wipe and just wipe that away as precisely as I can because I don't really wanna take away a ton of the foundation and I'm using it very lightly in that area where it looked all kind of weird. Wow, this was a huge mess up. I guess this sometimes happens when you have not used products before. Okay, so to make that line of demarcation kind of disappear, I'm just gonna take a dry tissue. So I'm taking just a drop of the foundation and just going back over that area, still with the dry sponge. Now, it doesn't look perfect, but it'll look better once all the makeup is done. So I'm gonna go in the other room and get a couple things that I will come back to use for my under eye area and finish fixing this mishap. Since I completely wiped away everything from underneath my eye, that included my eye cream. So I dabbed some eye cream underneath my eye and I'm gonna let that sink in a little bit while I take my e.l.f. concealer brush into the concealer. And I feel like this gives me more control than going in with the wand. So I'm just gonna lightly dab that in and blend it with my finger. So doing that with the brush worked better. This concealer is just not my favorite Essence product. I mean, I have a lot of favorites. This one is just not one of them. I'm gonna conceal and correct underneath my eyes with the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Correct and the Eye Bright Concealer very quickly. These keep it affordable and work well for my dry textured under eyes with dark circles. Even though we're doing a one brand video, sometimes we just have to make it work with other products if we have a huge fail because our makeup won't work otherwise. If you don't have dryness or texture under your eyes, this might work well for you. It just did not work for me. It started raining while I was applying my under eye concealer and so my lighting might look a little bit different. I had to rearrange some things so it wouldn't be so dark. So just in case you're wondering, wanted to fill you in on that. I have to say I'm a little bit nervous about this tinted powder even though it's sheer. I'm just wondering if it's going to darken things underneath my eyes. So I am going in very, very lightly because I've been messing around. I think I have some creasing going on so I'm gonna press that out and let's apply this first right here. Okay, are we seeing a lot of darkening? I think I'm okay. I mean, this is not a shade of powder I would normally apply, but I'm not completely hating it. I do love this on the face, but I normally use it as a finishing powder because it's not mattifying. Okay, I actually <laughs> like that. And because it's not mattifying, I think it works pretty well underneath the eye, especially with my dryness and texture. Although for future use, I would probably get a lighter shade. So let me just smash out any creases. Okay, not smash, press lightly any <laughs> creases from me just, you know, talking, moving around. No, I'm, I'm not hating it. I feel like it kind of is melding everything in. Okay, that looks <laughs> really shockingly nice, I think. I mean, I'm looking in my magnified mirror, I'm looking in the monitor, and I'm liking it. I don't have my powder puff in here. I do, however, have a brush. So I'm just gonna swirl this in the lid. So that's buffed in there really nicely, and I'm just gonna buff this all over the face. Dabbing this, buffing this all over the face. I put a little bit more in the lid and I'm taking my sponge along my T-zone. So I actually kind of like this powder over the Essence 
foundation because it is a lighter coverage. It evens out the skin even more. You know, I completely forgot to do anything to my eyelids. So I am going to take that concealer and put it on my eyelids. And I'm setting that with the powder also. There is a color difference between my face and my neck. I will be using bronzer. I have a bronzer here to correct that. So normally these two shades are great for me with how I normally use them. But because I use them the way I use them today, we had a darkening happen. So the shade 70 is a great match for me when I use a translucent powder over it. This shade nude is normally a great match for me too when I use it over nothing, over no foundation, over just primer, or if I use it as a finishing powder as the last step of my makeup. And when I do that, I've already set my makeup with a translucent powder. So it's not adhering to liquids and creams. So everything kind of darkened when I combined these two tinted products together. So if I was gonna use this as a setting powder, I would definitely go lighter than nude for my skin tone. But you know, normally how I use it, the shade nude is a great match. Okay, so I am gonna go ahead and bronze with this Sun Club Matte Bronzing Powder Palette. I think this is such a fantastic buy. So I'm gonna take these two shades. I mean, I don't even get any kick up and I'm just gonna take them on my neck. I mean, look. <laughs> That. that is so good. Now, because of what just happened, I don't think I really need bronzer, but I am going to just demo this for you, which will give a little bit of dimension. But I mean, I just want to tap that in there just to show you. I mean, it doesn't even kick up. It's really creamy, if that's possible, with the bronzer. So I'll just use it almost as a contour, just, you know, around the perimeter of my forehead where I get sun just slightly. I mean, I really don't need much bronzer. I just wanted you to see how uh, creamy and easily that applies, if you could even tell, because I'm <laughs> already bronzed from that combo. But this is a palette that gives you four great bronzers. It gives you versatility. It's nice quality at a drugstore price. This Hello Berlin palette is the one that I used in a recent video. The color scheme just spoke to me. There are several palettes that they have with this style but I just liked this one. For my transition area, I'm combining these two shades on one brush. And in my crease, I'm going in with that deeper shade. Just to give a little bit of a gradient. Now I'm actually gonna go ahead and take this lighter shade on my lid. You can even use your finger for that. And for the outer third of my eye, I'm gonna take this mid-toned green on a precision blending brush. I'm not gonna to be too precise with it. I just want it on that outer third. I'm also gonna take that same shade on a pencil brush along my lower lash line, extending the angle of my lower lash line up to create a lift. Now I wanna take that evergreen shade on that same precision brush, just on the outer third of the eye, just a little more precisely along where I extended that lower lash line and the outer third of the eye just to brighten up that area and kind of deepen it up. And I feel like the look really comes together when I take this light shimmery peach shade on the inner two thirds of my lid. It just brings everything together. I'm now gonna take a clean blending brush and blend it out in the crease and blend that shade in with the green a little bit. Now I'm gonna line with the black and you can line however you want. I am gonna tight line with a flat brush just really quickly just to give a little bit of definition to my lashes. And I'm gonna do a mini wing just to show you how pigmented this black is and how little fallout you get with it. I've used the brown the same way. It functions the same. I love to line with shadow. It lasts a long time and it's easy. I also like to smudge out my eyeshadow and these shadows smudge really nicely. Now I'm curling my lashes using my favorite lash curler, which is linked down below along with everything else. When it comes to Essence Mascara, pretty much everyone under the sun references this Lash Princess in the green tube, the False Lash Effect Mascara. But they have a lot of different versions of Lash Princess. So on this side, I have their newest one. It's the Curl and Volume Mascara, and I actually wanted to see how it worked compared to their Waterproof False Lash Effect Mascara. So this is actually the waterproof version of the green one that I just showed you. So this is just one coat of each, and I definitely see more curl on the waterproof side than I do on the Curl and Volume side. So I'm just gonna kind of look up, look down, look this way. 
<laughs> look this way. I can even feel my lashes hitting the hood of my eye. I'm gonna apply a second coat of each. I'm gonna see if this side falls more. The waterproof side will probably stay. You know what's weird? I feel like the waterproof side fell just a little bit when I applied the second coat. So now I feel like they look a little bit more even, but they're both curled pretty nicely, especially for someone who has completely stick straight lashes like I do. So I've duped both of these blushes in dupes videos that I've done fairly recently. This is the blush in the shade Bespoke, and this is the Mosaic blush in the shade All You Need Is Pink. I'll have both of those videos linked down below if you wanna see those. So I'm gonna use the blush in a shade that I haven't used before. It is the shade Beloved. It's just a nice neutral rosy pink that I think will brighten up the face nicely. And I was right, these blushes are nice and buildable. I feel like they're kind of no fail blushes. I like blushes that don't lay down too much pigment at once, you know, so you can't really mess them up. I like this shade a lot. This is a neutral pink that I could see myself wearing. Great for any time of year, actually. Now I'm going in with one of my favorite highlighters. It's just great, not just for drugstore. I've also duped the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. This is just such a great formula and just looks so pretty and flattering and it doesn't emphasize anything bad that you don't want it to. I hope you can see how natural that looks. It's just very subtle and I think that's one of the reasons why I like it so much. I think especially as I get older, I appreciate more buildable formulas that just aren't blinding and in your face. Ugh. So good. I lined my lips with the Essence Soft and Precise Lip Pencil in the shade Bold. Such a weird name for this color, don't you think? It's not really bold and in your face. It's kind of a neutral peach nude, which I love. This is a good basic lip liner at a fantastic price point, but it does kind of drag a little bit. You know, those of us that are in our mid 40s or older, even if you're a little bit younger and you just have a lot of lines in your lips or dry lips, this is not gonna be the creamiest formula. It's not gonna camouflage those lines, but it will give you a good base for underneath other lip products. It's not really one that I would overline with regularly. I mean, I did today, but it's kind of on the sheer side, just a little bit. So it's not really the best to try and overline with, even though, you know, I kind of tried to do that today. So I have a lipstick and a gloss here. The lip I have is in the shade 09 Special, which is a nude that I think goes with the lip liner really nicely. It's a little bit less peach, a little more on the nude side. This was in my recent dupes video as being a great alternative alternative for Charlotte Tilbury Bitch Perfect if you're wanting that same shade. Now it is a slightly different finish and texture. I go more into that in that video. I'll have it linked down below. This does have a creamy texture to it. It's not a true cream, but it's not really a matte either. Now in contrast to the lip liner, this glides on really nicely, but kind of similarly, it doesn't really hide all of your imperfections. Although I don't think it's the most unflattering lipstick I've ever worn either. It's a nice formula at a drugstore price. I think. I mean, I've been enjoying wearing this. It's a nice shade. I like the packaging too. It's pretty. Now I've had this lip gloss for a while. I have no idea what this is going to look like over this because it's a little bit cooler. It could be a great look. It also has a little bit of shimmer to it. This is the Shine 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 Gloss in the shade Bright On. I like the finish that this gave a lot. There's shimmer in here, but I don't really see it on my lips aside from just making them look nice and juicy and wet and plump. So I like that. It applied beautifully. There's a lot of slip to it. It's not tacky at all. I mean, this is not going to last as long as, you know, it would if I just wore the lipstick. It's really pretty. I am liking this so far. So this is the completed full face from Essence. Aside from the concealer mishap, I think everything went well. Of course, that's now. Be sure and check the description box to see how things were throughout the day. And let me know in the comments what you've tried from Essence, what you've liked, what you haven't liked, and other brands you'd like to see from me in the future. I will have my dupes playlist here for you if you want to see more of those videos. I hope you enjoyed this and found it helpful. If you did, I would love it if you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!